Middleton, left wing. Jonathan coming out. Right wing pass to Middleton. Middleton had it swept off his stick by Savard. Now comes to LaPointe. LaPointe up the middle. Bruins trying to regroup in their own zone. Off to Lemaire. His drive is just wide of the net. Rebound. LaFleur, he's bumped there by Jonathan. Now Dope feeds it off the glass to Middleton. Kept in by Ganey. Dope knocked down by Lemaire. Now Ganey's pass. Taken away by Rattel. Ganey right out in front. Covered up by Ricky Smith. The faceoff will come in the circle to his right. Ricky Smith has the puck cradled under his arm and then just sort of rolled over on it. Jacques Lemaire made a good play in taking Gary Dope right out of the whole thing so the Bruins were minus the defenseman when Ganey was coming in front. Well, if there's any such thing as justice in this world, the Bruins deserve a break. They absolutely deserve a break right now. How about Middleton on a 30-footer? I'm thinking. I mean, that would be just. Ten minutes, 14 seconds left to play in this first overtime period. We're tied at two. Rattel and Jarvis. Ooh, misfired on a shot. Backhander by Jarvis. Wide of the net. Milbury on it. Flips it high off the glass. Out to center ice. Comes off the stick of Savard. Robinson back after it. Larry Robinson. Up to Ganey, deflects it down into the Boston zone. Park and Jarvis after it. Jarvis taken down by Milbury. Park's pass comes to center to Rattel. Drop pass for Jonathan. Jonathan on the go, moving in. He comes around. Savard couldn't get the shot. Now fires it wide of the net with Dryden down. Ganey back on the left wing. Sends out Jarvis. Jarvis taken down by Brad Park. Milbury on the puck. Now with it, Middleton. Middleton on the red line. Rolls it into Savard, bangs it off the right wing boards to center. Milbury had Ool all lined up, didn't go after the puck. Pass given away to Robinson, only Park is back. Robinson coming down the slot, Park takes him down, he still gets the shot. And Cheever sweeps it behind the net. Ganey bumps Milbury, the pass comes out, the length of the ice, it'll be no icing. Back after it, third Savard, deep in his own zone, goes behind the net. Savard starts it up on the left side to Risebro, he's bumped by O'Reilly. Pass to center. Come on, do. Knocked away. And O'Reilly has it. O'Reilly swings around. Ricky Smith gives it off to Cashman. On the go. Cashman moving in. His drive is saved. Dryden. He juggles it and comes up with it. Wayne Cashman had the angle, the opportunity, and he let it fly. Dryden juggled it momentarily, but hung on. Well, this has been as entertaining a game as we've seen in the Stanley Cup playoffs in many years. Well, while the Canadians have dominated the first ten minutes of this overtime, the Bruins have come back here in the last minute and a half to put some pressure on Ken Dryden. Off the faceoff, O'Reilly controls, has the linesman and Lemaire to contend with. Buck out to center ice. Lombert with it. Lombert can't do much, throws it into the corner. Cheevers lets it come. Cornway behind the net. Centering fast, taken by O'Reilly, away from Lambert. Loose puck out in front, Dope. And Dope clears it to the line, but not out. O'Reilly bumps there, nearly fell down. Loose puck, knocked away. Lemaire dropped his glove, stops to pick it up. Now O'Reilly, bumped by Lambert, takes him down. Lemaire loses the puck to Cashman. Cashman off the right wing boards to O'Reilly across the red line. Into the zone, O'Reilly trying to come by. Savard, he can't do it. The puck lifted high in the air to center Lemaire with it. Feeds it by Lombert to the left wing corner. Coming after it, Brad Park sweeps it around the boards. Cornwallier didn't get it. Cashman does. Off the skate of Mondew. Back to Ricky Smith. Over to O'Reilly. Right wing. O'Reilly's pass off Lombert. O'Reilly picks it up himself. Down the middle across the red line. Overskates it. Goes back after it. Falls to one knee. Stops. Flips it across the blue line to the right wing corner. And it goes up into the crowd and off one of the usherette's hands. But she's getting plenty of immediate attention. Looks like she's going to be all right, Bob. I think she'll make it through the night. I'm hearing all sorts of strange noises on oh, my headset. Now Milbury comes up with the buck, trying to come by LaPointe. Tries to bump LaPointe down. Mark got with it. Flips it high into the right wing corner. Loose stick by Dryden. Dryden puts it behind the net. 
deck knocked away by Gila Point. Now Robinson, up to LaFleur. Guy LaFleur throws it left side to Mondu on the break. Trying to move around. Park stops shortly. Fires at long range. Deflected into the right wing corner. Mark out on it there. Out to Shepard. Across the red line. Greg Shepard. Long range drive. Just high. Glove saved by Dryden. Robinson. Moving around the net. Comes out. Robinson on the go. Big Larry across the red line to LaFleur. LaFleur drives. To do it, did it. The Canadians win the hockey game three to two in overtime. Thirteen minutes and nine seconds into overtime. Larry Robinson beating Guy Lafleur on the right wing. Lafleur firing, beating the keepers cleanly on the glove side. All of the Canadians, including Scotty Bowman. Off the Canadian bench to congratulate Guy Lafleur. Listen to this crowd. A standing ovation for the Montreal Canadiens as they win this one in overtime. Here's the announcement. Lafleur. Avec le numéro 19, Larry Robinson. À 13 minutes 9 secondes. Canadian score, scored by number 10, Guy Lafleur. Assist number 19, Larry Robinson. At 13 minutes 9 seconds. And for Guy Lafleur, his ninth playoff goal. Here at the Forum in Montreal, the final score... In overtime, the Montreal Canadiens, three, the Boston Bruins, two. Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti Day, and time for the Prince Spaghetti Western Theater. All right, this here's a stick-up. Whoa, it's the Bandito Brothers. Let's have all your gold. What gold? This is the Prince Express. Come on, we know you got a shipment of gold. You mean golden Prince Pasta? Prince Pasta? Yeah, Prince Pasta has a rich golden color. Looky here. Hey, there's a window in the box. Look at them cute little elbows. You're getting strange, Charlie. No, I mean the Prince elbows. Prince holds up El Dente. El Dente? Wasn't he a friend of Zorro? No, El Dente means firm, real Italian. That's the way all Prince products cook up. All right. Drop that pasta. It's a sheriff. Grab the rest of it and let's get out of here. We are getting away with my ship and the golden prince. What do we do? Simple. We'll head him off at the pasta. That's a prince of an idea, partner. Tune in next Wednesday for another episode of the Prince Western Theater. <laughs> Bob Wilson with Bob LaBelle back here at the Forum in Montreal where the Canadians have come up with the overtime goal that beats the Bruins 3-2. to two. Guy Lafleur's ninth goal of this year's playoff set up by Larry Robinson at 13-09. The three stars, no doubt about it, Guy Lafleur, the dominant player on the ice, number one star, Doug Jarvis, number two, and Jerry Cheevers, number three. Those were the three stars selected here tonight as the Bruins now face an uphill battle to come back from a 2 nothing deficit in this best-of-seven Stanley Cup final series. Not to mention the emotional and psychological letdown that the overtime goal by Lafleur had to deal with the Bruins. Well, they go back home and see what they can do down at the Boston Garden. Jerry Cheers, uh, Bob, really uh, was exceptional tonight. We pointed out a number of times to the third period into overtime. This gave the Bruins outstanding goal attending, but Montreal, in that overtime period, out shooting the Bruins 15 to 4. And therein lies the story. I mean, they completely dominated the overtime. It just appeared to be not what was going to happen, but when was it going to happen. And it happened across the stick of Guy Lafleur. Again, the final score in overtime here at the Forum in Montreal. The Montreal Canadiens. 
three, and the Boston Bruins, two. Don't have to knock me over the tape. The replays tonight, too late, 11.30. Real tough loss for the Bruins. Stupid dealer flew when you scored it. Jerk. Well, I'll see you later. Bob Wilson and Bob Lobel back here at Boston Garden, the sellout crowd. Some 14,602 on hand for this one. If history and precedence mean anything, why Canadians are going to go on to win this series. As you look back over the years, Canadians have now won eight straight final series games against our final series games against the Bruins. The Bruins' last final series win against Montreal was back in 1958. Uh, that's 20 years ago, April 15th, 3-1, to one, here at the Boston Garden. 20 years ago, 58 just seems like yesterday. Well, you go back to the playoff last year and uh, the game the other night in Montreal, I guess maybe you had to say the Bruins perhaps are closing the gap at any rate. Game here at the Garden, you know the final game went into overtime with Montreal winning and the overtime game at the Forum. Uh, on the Montreal ice, so the gap appears to be narrowing, at least this edition of the Bruins uh, team. You would think would have been disconsolate and absolutely depressed after the Guy Lafleur goal, but no, that was not the case in the locker room after the game, and I can testify to that in person. Uh, Jerry Cheevers and Brad Park, Terry O'Reilly and Don Cherry, and the people that I had immediate and direct contact with after that game Tuesday, that, hey, said, hey, we're disappointed. We had a chance to win the hockey game, but... Uh, all is not lost. We think we can play perhaps even better in our home building. So let's see what happens. And I think it's the, the right attitude to go into game three with. And we're not far away from seeing what's going to happen here in game three in 1978. In just a couple of minutes, we'll be set for tonight's Stanley Cup final playoff game between the Montreal Canadiens and the Boston Bruins. Bruins warm-up has been brought to you by WBZ, home of all the good sports, the Celtics, the Patriots, and the Boston Bruins. This game is brought to you by Chevrolet and your local Chevrolet dealer who bring you the new 1978 Chevy Malibu. Now at your Chevy dealer. By Boston's own Prince Macaroni Company, those great people who turned Wednesday into Prince Spaghetti Day. By Magnavox, extra tested for extra reliability, quality in every detail. By Anheuser-Busch, brewers of Budweiser, the king of beers. There's no better way to relax than with the easy taste of Budweiser. And in part, by Getty Premium and Getty Unleaded Regular, the higher octane gasoline with the lower price. Hi again, everybody, from the Boston Garden. I'm Bob Wilson, along with Bob Lobel, and we have going here Game 3 of the 1978 Stanley Cup Final Series between the Bruins and the Montreal Canadiens. First home game of this final series for the Boston Bruins. Let's quickly check the starting lineup. The goaltenders will remain the same. Jerry Cheevers will be going against Ken Dryden. For Montreal... Serge Savard will start on defense with Larry Robinson, two of Montreal's big three. Doug Jarvis will be at center. Bob Ganey on the left side and Rajon Uhl on the right side. Up front for the Bruins, the big line. Peter McNabb at center. John Winsink on the left and Terry O'Reilly on the right. Mike Milbury will start on defense with Bruins all-star competitor Brad Park. Well, the first goal has not meant uh, nearly as much in this final series as it has throughout the uh, playoffs. About 80% of the time in the previous uh, series, the first goal was the all-important thing. But in this series, Boston has garnered it twice, and it has uh, not paid off for them, Brad Park, on both occasions.